Brought to you by Get Well Yoga. Get back to doing what you love. We will begin with a short meditation. So I invite you with your eyes closed or with a slight gaze to just allow your attention to drop down into your body. As your attention has dropped down into your body, can you feel this descent into your middle core? And feel and notice how your awareness settles into your lower abdomen. This is a way of garnering attention a way to garner our attention and orient our attention to what we are experiencing Experiencing our breath, noticing our belly, rise and fall with each in-breath or out-breath. Our way of being oriented away from thinking. Moving from thinking to feeling When we can shift our attention, that is meditation. When we can move from conceptual to experiential, that is meditation. Can you sense subtleness, stillness, and silence? Simply notice the space.
and you find balance in silence balance that's not hasty, just clear as we rest in our state of being. Seal in our practice with the sound of the bells. Thank you everyone for joining. I'm going to start our movement practice. See if we can just extend your legs forward and just stretch, especially if you were cross-legged when you were seated. And from here, Let's come on to all fours. Bringing our wrists and line them up with our shoulders and our knees with our hips as we move into cat cow. Let's take an inhale heart forward, chest forward, and exhale, round your upper, mid, and lower back, tailbone comes back, the next in breath, head forward, heart forward, tailbone lifts, Exhale, round your mid, lower back, inhale, and exhale, just feel that back moving. Really good to loosen that spine, especially if you've been seated for a long period of time. Just keeping that spine healthy and fluid. One more cat cow. And exhale, round that lower back. Uh, let's come down to child's pose uh, called Chakra Vakasana. So let's bring the your buttocks to your heels as you lower your core to your thighs and come back up. And let's come back down. 
your forearms rest onto the earth. Next in breath, let's come back up. And let's do two more. Engage the core as you lift up. And one more, just moving the back. Let's come forward. Let's move down into just one more cat cow as we will transition into a standing posture. Now walk your hands towards your knees, tuck 10 toes in, and we're gonna lift up into Uttanasana. And let's come halfway. Inhale and bring your arms out to your side. John is doing a modification as we lift up. And come back down. Now sweep our arms out to our side for one more forward fold. Arms out to our side. Bend your knees, and as you inhale, come up halfway, come up with a flat back, exhale, come back down to the earth, bend your knees, and sweep your arms out to the side, palms touch each other and hands to your heart. Let's come to Tadasana, which is um, mountain pose in yoga, and as well as um, in Qigong, one of the important principles is also coming to a standing posture. Your feet are grounded to the earth. You're rooting down to the earth. Feel the length from the soles of your feet all the way up to the crown of your head. Your arms are relaxed. Your shoulders can come back and down. Palms face forward. Your thighs your inner thighs can come back and then lengthen your tailbone. It's really great for your lower back. Extend that spine long. The second principle is your mind. Our busy mind normally, see if we can just focus and sense and feel So we don't have the agitation of that busy mind. And then our breath is fluid and balanced. Now let's move our feet just about a little bit past hip distance apart. As we move into figure eight, so we're going to just move our hips into a figure eight motion. Relax the shoulders. Great rotation for your spine. 
bringing some fluid to your synovial joints. It's called imbrication. Your knees are bent slightly. And let's just rotate that in the opposite direction. Here we'll be introducing a Qigong move called Swimming Dragon. Let's slow down the movement. Bring both arms to a 90 degree position. Let's take our palms and place them together. As we lift up to the sky, and rotate both palms to the right as the hip moves to the left. And moving your dragon in opposite, in the opposite direction of your spine. So you're coiling your spine. So we're coming back to your mid-body. And as you get to the top, just lift your heels up. And let's coil back down. For our solar plexus, right onto our Lower Dantian, which is our energy center in Qigong. And then down to the earth. Let's come up to the top, coil up, and lift. And once more, let's move that dragon. dragon in terms of how it feels good for you and your body. Just keep the coiling of the spine. The dragon symbolizes strength and fluidity. Just come up and lift your heels up. And let's sweep our arms back down. Place our arms on our our hands on our lower dantian. For women, it would be your left hand over your right. And let's see if we can just garner some energy. In this space. here let's move into and we're going to introduce one of the um, five animal frolics it's a very ancient practice in Qigong discovered by a physician during the um, Eastern Han Dynasty and there were five animals that he had imitated movement and this this was the tiger the deer the bear the monkey and a bird I'll be introducing the movement of the bear and John will be introducing the movement of another animal, the bird. So please move, bring your feet a little bit past hip distance apart as we 
keep our, our feet firmly grounded to the earth. We're, front, we're rooted to the earth. And I would like to introduce a basic posture of the bear. So we'll be shifting our weight to the right. Your left leg stays straight. And then let's shift our weight to the left. So you're just moving from one side to the next. This time as you shift your weight to the right, rotate your waist to the right. And shift your weight to the left, rotate that waist to the left. And just imagine yourself grounded to the earth. This is a bear, very strong. From a uh, physiological standpoint, this is actually also good for your inner thighs, also good for your hips. You can make just a little bit more cardiovascular if you want to by moving a little faster. But for this morning or this evening, our movements will be slow and strong. Really good for your lower body, building strength in your legs. Let's do one more rotation to the right and another rotation to the left. Let's come to center. Now let's move our stance. So we'll be moving into a horse stance. So your legs are a little bit wider than your shoulders. Bend your knees slightly. Now depending upon where you, how you feel today, you can either have your stance short or longer. The way John has his stance a little wider. Your knees, keep your knees tracking with your feet your second toe ideally just to protect the knees. This is a form in Qigong, a bear form called um, your bear moves to the right and to the left. So let's bring our arms to a T position. Your palms face up to the sky. And rotate to the right as in your next in-breath. And you're rotating from your mid-back. And let's come back to center. Inhale, let's rotate over to the left. And come back to center. The bear turns. A lot of the Qigong moves are very simple in how they're named. The bear turns to the left, comes back to center. The bear turns to the right, comes back to center. The bear symbolizes Yang, the bear also correlates to kidney health. And the earth or the water element in traditional Chinese medicine. Now this time the bear will push down so bring your right arm and push down behind you. And let's push down. One 
one last rotation. Sweep our arms out and up and hands back to your heart. Thanks, Mando. Yeah, we're going to 1050 today, and we'll start with some neck and shoulder exercises. And we'll start with a, a nice uh, stretch for the shoulder. So I'll mirror you. If we take our left hand to the C7, where the thoracic spine meets the cervical spine, you might even find a bit of a, a lump there. And we're extending the elbow up to the heavens. Take a moment to elevate the toes, so the toes spread wide and then place the widespread toes back down to earth. Feel the eye of the sole of the foot connected into the earth as you begin to lengthen through the torso. Inhaling, the right hand comes up to the elbow and meets the elbow. And think about lengthening. Notice the sensations here of length through the body. See if you can Lengthen through all four sides of the torso. Feel the length through the front body, through both sides of the body, and up through the back, out through the crown of the head, out through the tip of the elbow, as you begin to perhaps direct your heart up to the heavens and looking out over the elbow, the ascended elbow. So there's a slight rotation in the spine here. Keep rooting down through the feet and lengthening out through the elbow, out through the crown of the head. Two more breaths, breathing quietly in and out of the nose. And then releasing that back down. That might feel a little strange in the shoulder. We don't often get to go into these deep stretches in the shoulder. Moving to the other side, the palm comes to the top of the thoracic spine, the base of the cervical spine. Inhaling as we take the hand to the elbow. And take a moment here to begin to root down through the feet, perhaps spread toes once more and place the widespread toes into the earth. Always starting with the foundation, our feet. Nice solid foundation, hip width, shoulder width apart, or even a little bit wider in your stance. And then lengthen through the torso, out through the crown of the head, and perhaps directing the heart up towards, rotating the spine and looking up past the elbow. See if you can keep, there's a tendency to have the head wander forward. See if you can draw the head back into the arms or back into the hand. Nourishing breath as you grow long out through the crown of the head. Maintain the length and exhale all the way down through the feet and out through the crown of the head in the opposite direction. Two more breaths like that, lengthening and widening. Wonderful, slowly coming back to center, releasing that last movement. Mano introduced us to a lot of figure eight movements today. We'll do one for the neck and shoulders, interlacing the fingers back behind us. So around about the tailbone, feel free to extend two straight arms back and draw the heart forward. And we're imagining a figure eight on its side. So visualize a figure eight, maybe a couple of meters wide, nice wide figure eight on its side. And we're tracing the outline of that figure eight with our chin. So we're starting to make these very gradual movements with the neck and shoulders as we take the chin towards the shoulder, then up to the heavens, and then slowly back down to the opposite shoulder, and then up to the heavens. The chin ascends and slowly draws and traces the outline of this wide figure eight. There's no hurry.
then make the movement less big. Reduce that to maybe a couple of feet, that drawing or tracing of the figure eight. And then make it even less big as you begin to spiral the neck in that figure eight movement up towards the heavens. We saw this in Swimming Dragon, the same move without neck, but we're isolating the movement now just to the neck as it spirals, maybe just an inch or so at a time, tracing that figure eight and coming up on the heels, find a point of focus up, perhaps even down on the floor for balance, if that feels better for your balance. Slowly the feet touch down. So we're starting with some neck and shoulders. We're gonna take the left hand and glide it down through the midline. We'll do one hand at a time here, just so you get a sense of the movement. And then the right hand slowly comes up to the heavens and the eye of the palm descends very slowly through thick air, down through the midline. And the thumb is about two or three inches from the heart as it descends down, releasing trapped and stagnant energy. Opposite hand now slowly comes down. Now as the hand meets the heart, the other hand faces palm up and comes up to form this ball of energy. And then we're taking the right hand to shoulder height. There's a deep bend in the elbow, as though you're serving dinner on a plate and the hand is at elbow height or shoulder height, I should say. The opposite hand descends down through the midline. Right hand descends down through the midline. Left hand slowly comes to shoulder height. Now we're introducing two hands at play. Inhaling hand descends down through the midline. Opposite hand sweeps to shoulder height. Palm faces up at the shoulder, palm faces down through the midline. So you get this sense of receiving energy through the eye of the palm at shoulder height and releasing energy down to the earth through the hand at the midline. And you can begin to transition the weight towards the leading hand. So as the right hand comes to shoulder height, transferring the weight into the leg. of this as a moving meditation as we glide with effortless power, setting our focus perhaps at the shoulder height of the outstretched middle finger of the left hand. Begin to bring our attention and focus right to the middle finger of the hand at the shoulder. Two more. Inhaling and exhaling as the hand descends down through the midline. Last one. Both hands come up in a clearing gesture, down through the midline, and as the hands come to the heart very slowly, imagine that we have a piece of string now between thumb and middle finger. Coming to hip with shoulder width apart, perhaps a little bit wider, almost as wide as the mat as you can see. Slight bend in the knees, slight tuck of the tailbone. Inhaling as we imagine a piece of string spanning right across the heart. Spread toes wide, elevate toes, exhaling a ball of energy between the lagal points, these energy signature between the palms. And the hands don't quite come together. They form a small ball. Inhaling, chest gets bigger, heart gets bigger. Imaginary piece of string spanning right across the heart as the shoulder blades draw back and down. Exhaling, a ball of energy. Lengthen, deepen, and slow down the breath. Inhaling, spread toes wide, Exhaling option now as we make this ball of energy between the palms to raise the heels off the earth. So we're finding some balance and leg strength here. Find a point of focus. Inhaling, thumb and middle finger come together. String right across the heart. 
exhaling, heels rise, inhaling, toes rise, exhaling, heels rise, toes rise. Last set. Wonderful. Hands come up once more in a clearing gesture down through the midline, about a couple of inches apart, very slowly through the air. As we come to a slightly wider stance and we can mirror the crane, the movement of the crane as it comes up, the arms come in front. As we come into a deep squat, best you can today. We just do the best with what we have. Perhaps it's just the here today. Perhaps it's all the way to the earth. Whatever feels good in your body. We're still warming up the body, so be kind to the body. I'm here in yoga to be able, from Qigong, to be able to do these practices all our life. So be kind to the body. Just go where you feel comfortable. And about a 70% facilitated training range. So 100% focus, but 70 to 80% of effort. Last one. Exhaling as we come down. Inhaling a nourishing breath through the tip of the nose. Hands come down once more through the midline, about an inch or two apart, very slowly. As hands come to shoulder height, the arms extend to shoulder height, and the knees come together. We have another bird. We draw inspiration from the animal kingdom, and the thumb and finger, thumb and middle finger, come together, making a firm fist down. So the toes are pointed in towards each other, knees are pointed in towards each other, Firm fist down, firm fist up. Spread fingers wide, the eagle claw. Exhale and release as we stand tall. We're doing seven. Inhaling, knees come together. Firm fist down, firm fist up. Spread fingers wide, exhale and release. Inhaling, draw the shoulder blades back and down. Firm fist down, firm fist up. Spread fingers wide. Exhaling and release. I'll face this way so you get a better sense perhaps or another angle. Firm fist down, firm fist up. Spread fingers wide, eagle claw. Exhale, release. Three more. Firm fist down on the inhale and hold as we come with fist up. Exhale, release, push out to the far horizons. Two more. Last one, firm fist down, firm fist up, eagle claw, and release. Well done, and just release the shoulders, shrugging the shoulders up to the ears a few times. They've just done a lot of work, good for strengthening the shoulder atlas, the upper back, supporting the cervical spine and upper thoracic spine and in the opposite direction a few times. And it may feel nice just to independently roll each shoulder here as well. So see if you can keep the movement fairly still in the hands and isolate the movement just to the shoulders. And in the opposite direction a few times, just releasing any tension in the shoulder joint. And speaking of shoulders, we're We've got a good focus today on naked shoulders. As we take the back of Om Miryu, again, the right hand to the lower back. Left hand, the back of the hand, now comes around the body and there's a nice twist in the spine here as so we begin to look up at the hand that's traveling back behind us. And the thumb faces down and we're extending out through the eye of the palm of the extended left arm. And then the palm rotates up to the heavens as we slowly begin to rotate forward and the hand comes across 
and the arm across the midline as we set our gaze right atop of the extended middle finger for a moment of sattva, a moment of stillness and clarity. Hand comes back to the midline and slowly glides down through the midline releasing trapped and stagnant energy. Moving with grace, back of hand comes to lower back. The back of the right hand then swoops back behind us as we follow the middle finger, set our gaze at the middle finger, the thumb faces down, palm rotates up to the heavens, and then comes across the body, a nice lateral stretch here, and then slowly comes back to the midline. So we develop a little bit of flow now as we take the back of the hand forward and back, thumb faces down, extend out through the palm, palm faces up, strong straight left arm as it comes across the body and back to center and down through the midline. Inhaling, and exhaling. Move like water, effortless power. We come to another movement from the birds, inspired by the bird kingdom. Moving crane. And you can think of this in yoga as Vrakasana, as tree pose. And you're welcome to come into, into tree pose. But we're gonna do this with agility today um, and have our moving tree, if you will. It's like a moving Vrakasana or moving tree. But it's moving crane. So as we come to hip with shoulder width apart in our stance. As we take the arms up to shoulder height and extend up to the heavens, the left foot raises and just lightly touches the leg. And then as the hands descend down through the midline, the foot touches back down. Inhaling, you can stay here in tree pose or you can move with us. Whatever feels good in your body. Perhaps you want to strengthen today and hold that pose or work on your balance. For agility, we activate the fast twitch muscle response by continuing to move. Really great for our coordination. Excellent for our balance. It's interesting how these poses came about, the inspiration from the animal kingdom in martial Qigong. The Shaolin monks were sitting meditating and not moving and were subject to uh, the marauding armies around them. And the armies then attacked and they needed to define a way in which to defend themselves. So they studied the animals. They studied, first of all, the monkey its technique for ground fighting, attacking from the ground. But then the army saw this and realized their style and had developed another style to trap the monkey called the crane, the white crane. They studied the movements of the crane and its ability to trap as we take the hands up, slowly back down. Releasing trapped and stagnant energy, perhaps closing the eyes for a moment. We'll do a clearing gesture here. As the hands come up to the heavens now, point the fingers back behind us. And then the hands slowly come down to about head height. And as the hands come to head height, direct the fingers forward. Inhaling, raising the heels. Exhaling, slowly lowering the hands down alongside the torso. A sharp exhale as the 
back so the hands return to earth and then we seal in that sense of calm and strength. Let's try that one more time. Inhaling up, the fingers point back behind us, slowly through thick air they descend. Fingers point forward at eye height, slowly raising the heels on the inhale, exhaling very slowly. Sharp exhale, inhaling and exhaling. And that's all we have time for today. Just a bit. I, I think at 9.50, we'll just let go of all the anxiety in our life. My watch is a little fast, but we're gonna wrap up on time. I know you guys got things to do. So thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate the support. Great to see everyone and be able to do these practices with you. Perhaps tapping the heels, inhaling. Let go of all the anxiety in your body, all the anxiety, the week, the days, the tension, what we're going through. See if you can let it go. And then very slowly, same movement, begin to just move the arms, closing the eyes. Imagine the arms just blowing in a warm tropical breeze, very slowly, bending lightly at the elbows and wrists. Hands come to the heart. Then up to the Ming Tong, the space just above the eyes, at the forehead, and we look up and we seal in all the sensations of the practice. Perhaps an intention for the day or the evening. The hands come back to the heart as we thank ourselves for taking this journey and all those that support our practice. Namaste. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Much everyone. peace. Be safe. Be well.